Uh, uh, I thought we were going to get you to sit down. Uh, he was going to catch you. <laughs> What's going on, guys? Beastly Thoughts episode, what is it, 96? 96. We don't know. We're old. Getting real okay. damn close to that 100 number, that big 100. 96. And we got we got a special guest, a returning host, one would say. <laughs> Nine to five gamers, it's been too long. How you been? Good. Good, good. I've been Slow working clap. hard. Raising babies, you know. Raising babies. <laughs> <laughs> I playing a lot of video games. <laughs> so uh, we're glad to have Nine to Five Gamers back. Of course, we got Beastly over here. We got Robbie over here. And I want to ask you guys what you've been playing. So let's let's start with Nine to Five. What have you been playing? I've been actually um, lately. I was. I just started the Witcher DLC, the, the new the new one, not the not the one that's coming out, Heart of Stone or whatever it's called. Yeah. And then um, I've been playing Rainbow Six uh, Siege or whatever. I wish it was Vegas, but Siege. <laughs> um, I played uh, Destiny, of course. I played the the hard the hard challenge mode or whatever. The War Priest this weekend. I did that. Uh, I've been playing all kinds of Bastion. I've been playing all kinds of random, random old stuff too. What that's, you, that's about what it. What have you been doing with uh, Rainbow Six there? Like, uh, I, are you enjoying that game? Is it holding up? Is it? I, it's, I, it's good if you got people to play with. If you got like yeah. a group, it's kind of like um, Evolve only better because there's more of like a, a strategic way to uh, go in against. The other team when they're doing missions, which it's it's fun in that way. But if you're playing like solo and you you end up going against another group of people that are like all linked together and they're chatting and all that stuff, you're gonna get destroyed. You yeah. get destroyed. The good thing is, is a lot of people like if you do run solo, a lot of people end up using mics. Like if you're smart, you end up using a mic. And people yeah. are now to the level of like if you don't use a mic, they just kick them anyway. They will like vote to kick them out the match if they're not using a mic, which is smart. <laughs> yeah, in that game you gotta have so much communication. It just relies so heavily on it. Even if you are with people you don't know, you gotta be communicating and really strategizing together. I've noticed. That's good. I wanna uh, just real quick say also how happy I am to see Nine to Five uh, rejoining the Beastly Thoughts. Uh, he's going through some changes on his channel. I'm sure by the end of the show today, you can let everybody know how that's going to change. Yeah, we're right into the music again today. There you guys know it's yeah. going to be a damn good episode because it is episode 96. Um, Reverse 69, yes. If you yes didn't know. Yes, <laughs> so I guess I'll get into what I've been playing. It's been kind of a slow, slow week for me in gaming. My uh, stepdad actually passed away uh, Friday. Oh, I'm sorry so to hear I, that. It, yeah, it's one of those situations where I just left Ohio and I was up there vacationing and I saw him there. And he just passed away. So we saw him, what, two weeks ago when he died. But, you know, been on, on the phone quite a bit. I'm trying to debate whether or not I'm going to go straight back up there or not. But the family's gone through it. Everybody's pulling together. But I, I did make a lot of videos. I rendered 12 videos yesterday, so I've been really, really busy. But wow. uh, I, I've been playing um, uh, some older games, but games that are really fun for me. My wife and I kind of dug back into Rocket League. Uh and we've been really, really enjoying and playing that game. Uh, just goofing off. We had like a date night last night. What's uh, a, what's online play like on Rocket League right now? Because I feel like at the end of my time with that game, people were getting damn good at it. They are, man. <laughs> Let me tell you, um, people are doing some stuff that you wouldn't expect a person to be able to do. Mm -hmm. I saw the developers of the game actually play against, I think it was IGN. And uh, th there was four versus four. And these developers, they were doing crazy stunts like jumping into the air and just flying up and hitting the ball and stuff. People yeah. were doing that to us. And and it's pretty uh, amazing to see. It really pushes you to want to learn to be better at the game. But it's just fun. Even if you lose, it's one of those games I think it'll always be just as fun the day it, it was when it came out. Um, oh, yeah. I feel like 10 years from now, the game will be just as fun as it is right now. We had a blast playing that. I've also slowly but surely been getting back into Fallout 4. Uh, that's the, that's a game that I really want to play and continue to to play and beat. Uh, and it it feels just as good as it did when I first started playing it. It's just one of those things where I feel like I've already played it, even though I know I haven't. And so your your want and your need to dig deep into it, you feel like maybe it isn't as warranted as it should be because you played Fallout 3 and it feels it just feels so similar, even though I know it's not. And yeah. that was pretty much that sums up. I had a few games of The Last of Us this week. Um, but that sums up my week, especially towards the end of the week. I kind of backed up and haven't really been playing a lot of stuff. Been spending a lot of time on the phone with my mom and my brother and my yeah. sister and family. 
But uh, yeah, that's all it's been for me. Sure. Yeah, yeah, for sure, for sure. Yeah, you know, I've been thinking about you a lot lately because uh, the division. We've seen a lot of gameplay come out on the division. Their NDA kind of broke this week. Uh, I think it was Friday or maybe it was Saturday, and. The gameplay of that reminds me an awful lot of the multiplayer gameplay in The Last of Us. I was wondering if you uh, if you saw that connection as well, and if you think your uh, your skills because you got pretty you got pretty damn good skills in The Last of Us. Oh yes, I do. Yes. So I'm wondering if you, if you if you're expecting those skills to translate because they're both third person shooters, right? They got a lot of you know inventory control like while you're playing. You know, I'm wondering uh, if you're excited for that. I'm really excited for it. The gameplay that I did see does seem like a, a more visually stunning version of The Last of Us. I'm sure the controls are very, very different. That'll probably be the, the, yeah. the one changing factor because The Last of Us, you've really got to go through a lot to wrap your mind around the way that that multiplayer actually controls. And once you get it, it's very rewarding, but you got to be willing to actually bridge that gap and learn it. But they, have sure a, they have a unique set of controls. Extremely, it's very, very strange. Kind of like when you play Shadow of the Colossus. It's one of those games where the controls don't really make sense, but when you actually start playing it, you're like, "Oh God, this, this, it works somehow." But yeah, the division looks. I don't know what to expect. It looks great. A lot of people, I know, there's a guy or two on the show right now who played it, who are, who better talk about it today. <laughs> but yeah, I'm, I'm really, really excited to play it. It'll be a day one purchase for me. I'm looking forward to the beta, uh, and hopefully, my Last of Us skills transfer over because the Last of Us is kind of. It can be a fast-paced game, but a lot of the times you've you got to kind of take slow, deliberate thoughts and actions, and uh, hopefully that will transfer over. We'll see. If they have bitch bombs, I'm in. <laughs> oh, man. If they have bitch bombs, I'm going to be so disappointed. Robbie? Bitch bombs. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure there will be some form of them, Briar. Can't wait. Uh, this week I've been playing a lot more of modded Skyrim on PC because you guys know I was getting obsessively into Skyrim the other week, and man, I'm still enjoying the hell out of that, just adding more and more mods. I'm really getting to PC, guys. I might be just getting over to the PC Master. Oh, no. I just want to inform you now, it might be happening. No. I might want to upgrade my PC one day and really start getting into it, but uh, man, Skyrim is just such an amazing game that still holds up. I've been loving that. I've also been playing Minecraft on uh, Xbox One with a couple friends. It's been really fun, and that's been most of my week, honestly, just those two, and and Guitar Hero Live as well, I've been playing a lot of because it's very fun. Minecraft just never goes it. away, does it? <laughs> I'm sorry, what? Minecraft just never goes away, does it? No, it, it never seems to end. It's just the phenomenon that's never going to stop. It's never going to stop going. Yeah. Mm. Might be time for me to dig back in. <laughs> very funny. <laughs> Literally dig back in. <laughs> Uh, I've been playing a ton of Tomb Raider, and i got to tell you guys, I'm absolutely in love with this game. Uh, you know, it, I didn't get to play it right when it got released, uh, just because I was so busy with other stuff. Uh, and I was really, you know, more excited about Fallout 4. They both shared the same release day, which was the dumbest thing they could have possibly done for Tomb Raider. Yeah. Uh, but ultimately, like, I really enjoy this game. I think that they've, they've taken what was awesome about the last game they made two years ago, uh, but they really expanded upon it. They kind of have much more of a exploratory nature to it. There's much more actual tomb raiding. The game is, it's just more in depth. You really feel like uh, Lara Croft as a character is just kind of fun to get to know. Uh, I really love the shooting aspect of it. I think they improved the shooting aspect compared to the last game. The bow and arrow just feels super fun to use. Like I, I got to say, I actually think this game is the better game that came out that day. Uh, it's just it's. It's yes, just a it fun is. game to play. It is. Yeah, I think yeah, I think that argument can be made. Um, I still love both games, but Rise of the Tumor absolutely is a game more people should get into because it's wonderful. And yeah. the fact that it came out the same day as Fallout 4 was such a shame because obviously everyone was playing Fallout 4. Yeah, the but, hype level for that game was intense. Tomb Raider yeah. being you know, only an Xbox exclusive or totally a time overshadowed. exclusive. Overshadowed it. But, you know, I really like this type of game. In the past, I've really liked the Uncharted games and other Tomb Raider games. But this one, I feel like it takes it to a new level with the, the ex exploration that you have in this game. Like, really, you get time to kind of just, like... You get time to explore the world you're in. You get you got to find, like, secret tombs that are around that give you actual beneficial rewards. So, you know, it... It makes you feel like you want to go find this stuff. It makes it feel like it's a rewarding process once you do kind of figure out these puzzles in these tombs. It's really a fun game. 
like I said, the shooting is much better. Uh, there's still a bit of jankiness around the way she controls. Uh, you know, I think that's a third person thing. Like I, I've always preferred first person kind of movement options over third person because I think just because you can't visually see that jankiness. <laughs> um, but I mean, the game is spectacular. I'm I'm really having a ball with it, and it's already discounted. I got yeah. it. I got it at Best Buy discounted. They're they're going for what forty bucks now, right? I think so. Yeah. I'm proud of Briar. I think the quality of Tomb Raider is amazing, but the content in Fallout is better. You know what I'm saying? There's so much more to do in Fallout than there is in Tomb Raider, and I think that's why a lot oh, of people yeah. flock to Fallout. Yeah, because it's so, just this huge game. You can kind of just keep playing for like a month, just building your settlements, doing all the quests, exploring. Like, There's just so much to do there if you really like that game. Yeah, that so, makes a lot of sense to me. So, so what you're saying, 9 to 5, inner black ninja, as I like to call it. <laughs> yes, the new um, man. If if a person were only to buy one of those games and they had the Xbox One, you you would tell the person who wants a game that's going to last longer to get Fallout over Tomb Raider. Would you still say get Tomb Raider? Because um, I'd say I'd say it depends. Like if you're if you're if you're if you don't have money to just be expendable and buy whatever the hell you want, yes, I do agree with buying Fallout. I agree with that 110. percent Me myself, I own both the games. I played about maybe six hours of Fallout and got bored and turned it off. You know, <sighs> but I think that has a lot to do with me playing Witcher and playing Metal Gear and playing all these other, like, super open-world games that just trump that game, like, on a high level. But yeah. opinion, that's my opinion. I think those games do everything that game does, only they do it good. Like, frame rates, good. The gameplay, good. It's fun. <laughs> now, uh, we didn't get a chance to talk to you over the last couple of weeks, of course, uh, and you mentioned two really stellar AAA titles, Metal Gear and Witcher 3. Of those two, which one, which one was your favorite last year? Um, Metal Gear, because I base a lot of my gameplay off of fun factor. If the game is super fun to me, and Metal Gear was probably one of the more fun games I've played in a long time. Because once yeah. you get past the half a point of the game, which is technically the end to all the noobs, after you get past that, you you get all your gear taken from you. And you go in like old Metal Gear, like old school. Like you have to be super tactical, and it's not simple anymore. So a lot of people don't know about that or haven't got that far or have beaten it and said, okay, yeah, I beat it. No, you didn't beat it. Play the second chapter, and then it's even more hard than anything yeah. that you played earlier. Oh. I've actually heard a lot of people say that about Metal Gear Solid The Phantom Pain, that they weren't previously Metal Gear fans, but playing this game and knowing nothing about the previous games, they became huge fans and they loved the game. So. And, an, and another thing, Kojima makes games the best. They're, like he's borderline like close to Nintendo in their quality of the game. It runs at 60 frames a second. It doesn't drop a frame rate ever, ever the whole time I played it. It didn't drop, and it mm. looks good. It's a good looking nice. game. Awesome, yeah. awesome. All right, so before we get into news, I want to talk about the division nine to five. Did you get a chance to play the alpha? Yeah, I played it. Um, I played literally every single side mission in the alpha, <laughs> and I did everything yeah. there is to do in the alpha. I played well, as well. I think I played uh, almost 12 hours of it just to make sure, like, I did everything. And then I was having fun doing the little extra stuff that there is because you could go into the dark zone and, like, compete with people, but you had to get to that level in order to do so. Mm -hmm. And, Robbie, yeah. you played, I played it. Easily and I have well. not played it. Yeah. So, all right, so tell me what you guys... Uh, Gameplay-wise, like, the way it controls, what would you guys compare it to, like, a game that we've played... I can't I compare. Uh, did, you, um, did you play Ghost Ghost Recon? Yeah, it, it it's plays, very similar to like, Ghost Recon. Shooting sure. mechanics is similar to like Ghost Recon. Um, I I like the fact that there is no jump because that helps out games that are third person to run better and not have the whole janky like oh I'm gonna jump off of this and and shoot people. Uncharted is the only game that I've ever seen do it and do it well. Yeah, like, Uncharted sure it does jumping really good in their games. Mm -hmm. Mm, Ghost Recon. That that used to be my joint, man. Ooh, yeah. Jungle Storm, Island Thunder. <laughs> Don't get me started. <laughs> this is made by uh, Ubisoft Red Storm as well. This is the same team who did the Ghost Recon games. If I had to really summarize what I think about The Division, it's a really excellent feeling third-person shooter with a good cover system, and it has those sort of online and MMO aspects of Destiny, because there is those guys you kill, there's those higher level enemies. All the enemies have different levels on them, and there will be like bosses that can drop legendary loot. There's tons of different guns and armor to find, and it definitely 
from an aspect, like an online perspective, it feels like Destiny in a lot of ways, and it reminds me of that, but I love that the gameplay is something different, and I really enjoyed what I played of it. One of the things that really reminds me of Destiny, not having played it, is some of the responses I've heard is that, you know, we got the alpha, and it was super fun. Really I just good. hope this isn't like 25% of the full game. That, that's that's yes. lots of the same thing I was hearing about that's the Destiny right. alpha and the Destiny beta. Yeah. What, do you guys ha- what do you guys think about that? That's why I was thinking. I was thinking in my head, like everyone's blowing up. All oh, the the alpha's being released this day. The alpha's being released this day, and then now the beta's being released. And I was thinking in my head, I don't want to necessarily play it because mm-hmm. I don't want to be burnt out when the game comes out and have to play. Okay, yes, when it comes out, you're going to play the same stuff again that Absolutely. you just played. Why do I want to do it again and again and again? That kind of hurt Destiny in my eyes because I did the same thing three times, you know. Yeah, and then and then it's like here, do it one more time. You know, <laughs> no kidding. But if it does have that replayability, like Destiny has an amazing replayability to it, a lot of reason to come back. Then it doesn't really matter as much if they can nail it really well. I feel like it'll really get people into it, and it won't matter so much if you're kind of retreading the same ground. If there's a purpose for it, yeah. Well, we what do you guys feel about though that like that this was twenty five percent of the game that they showed us? Do you guys feel like that's fair? Do you? Is there any indication that that's well, true? Well, when you, when you go into the game, you can look at the map, right? Mm-hmm. And it has a line of the stuff you can go to on the beta, and then it has a line around that of the stuff that's the actual world that's coming with the game. And mm-hmm. it was probably yeah. a quarter of that space. When you when you see it, it was about a quarter. Okay. But it's it's not like Destiny where you go to a world. It's it's no. more like it's just an open environment that you can wander around in, right? <laughs> Yeah. You get dropped into it, and there's not really, like, when you go into another area, there's not really load screens. It's just, like, it does, like, the Tomb Raider thing. You know, when you get into a new area, and it like, I'm going to walk slow, because that's not a loading time, yeah. right? <laughs> you're loading right there. That's all you're doing, and they do the same thing with this. Yeah, okay. it's all dynamic. Even the PvP section, known as the Dark Zone, what happens is there's a bunker you enter into, you got your weapon store, you buy some guns, and then you seamlessly walk into the Dark Zone. There's no matchmaking. You just walk in there, you squat up with a couple people, and you try and get loot and kind of get out. It's a really intense place, and you have your gas mask on because there, it is like a contamination zone. Super cool. Just really dynamic how this how's game the, is. How does the loot feel? Is it fun? Like it... When you get new loot, are you excited about you, it? You get what happens is is you'll you'll do a, a mission or a, a a side side mission or whatever, and you finish the mission, and things would drop, and you pick them up, and it would say like this is for this type of gun or this is for this type of gun. So there's certain attachments that you get that you can't necessarily put on any gun. So you can't put like this grip on a submachine gun, an AR, and all this other stuff. It only works for that type of class, and that's it. But you can you can fully customize the guns out. Like you can take a gun that's pretty weak as hell and equipped it with a bunch of different stuff and make it pretty strong. Yeah. Like I was using a scar all the way up until the end of the uh, all the way up until the end just because I liked the way the scar fired. So I took that gun, I just equipped it with all the gear I wanted. I rolled with that gun all the way till the end. No, it I got... reminds me a little bit of like Call of Duty or B- Battlefield where you kind of upgrade a weapon to make it yeah, something you really yeah. love. Yeah, they have they have like uh like every every thing you attach to your gun, it has a a skill and the skill will go up or lower depending on what you what you prefer. If you prefer it to fire faster or, like, when you put a silencer on, it will take a little bit of damage down, you know, just mm-hmm. like it does in any game. But then when you look at your gun, like, when you look at it in the menu screen, it will give you one number, and that number is like, okay, this is the, the max amount of damage you're going to do, Type kind of like how they do Destiny. Let, let me okay. ask you guys a question because this game is going to have some similarities to Destiny. Are you going to be able to trade loot at all? I don't know. As of I right now, so. I don't know. I, yeah, I, I don't know either. Though. I, I I hope they don't because if they do, they're gonna they're gonna hurt they're gonna hurt the game unless they do it in the in the eyes of um, Elder Scrolls does it really well. Like you have to be a part of that group and you can only trade so many pieces per amount of time and all that stuff. That's smart. They do it really good in that game and they make it so you can't take like a super high level piece of loot and just trade it to like a noob and be like, here, you can have this without putting the time into the game, you know? Gotcha. They do it very well. I don't know if Division's going to have any of that at all, but the way I like I look at it is if you don't do it right, don't do it at all because you're going to break your game. Yeah. Yeah, and as far as I know, too, uh, going back to the loot system, like say you're in a group of three people, you're wandering the streets, you kill a guy, and he happens to drop a weapon. From what I know, your entire group is going to see that weapon and can actually pick it up. You're each going to be able to get that. So yeah, only, only in the dark zone, though. 
Is it Dark Zone? Okay. It's only in the Dark Zone. In the in the normal world, like when, when you join my world or I join your world and we're doing missions, I see my loot and you see your loot. Okay. And uh, the pistol is the only gun that doesn't ever run out of ammo. All your other yeah. weapons... That's a good point. Yeah, the pistol, you can just fire forever, and you can get new versions of that, though. But other guns, you're going to need to find ammo for. All right, next question. What console are you guys buying it on? Xbox One, because the exclusivity. Well, damn it. <laughs> We're already screwed. I buy, I, buy, I buy everything but exclusives on my Xbox because I know more people that play on PlayStation. I could I could go online at any given day and fill up a whole damn team, you know? That's how I am, too, is I, I've just got more... I, I all my my Destiny clan is on the PlayStation, and you know those are people that I know are going to buy this game because I've yeah. talked to them quite extensively about it. So I know that these guys are going to just be able to jump right in, and we're going to be able to start you know whatever the end game is for you know, Division. Did, Robbie, did you see the raid thing when you walked by that room and it's like, hey, like you needed a certain level of mask to get in this room, and I without the that. mask yeah. you couldn't get in there. And the contamination zones. Yeah, and there was like a there was one that was like a raid, and you needed twelve people to join into that. Twelve. I don't know people. what that means. Though. I don't. Yeah, I don't know that. if it's like oh. your group is twelve or you're going with a bunch of people. Wow. I don't know what that's about. That's got so, me pretty hyped right there. Yeah, yeah, and I saw that. I'm like, yeah, Have you convinced you, Brian? Twelve people. <laughs> oh, Sounds like I'm gonna have to cancel my. Uh... Pre-order done and pre-order on PS4. God damn it, guys! Like, so, somebody, no, I want the, somebody I want opened the up a website, uh, the division lfg.net. <laughs> they, I just yeah, they hope should. They should. The exclusivity. I think that makes sense. If I own both, like that's all. And I thought you guys would do that too, but it's not a big deal, really. I can. We can I, I don't even know what's the exclusive. Co- I did some research on it. I don't. I can't even really figure out what the exclusive content on the Xbox is. Well, you can you can pre-order the re- reserve reserve or pre-order the the gold edition of the game, which uh-huh. is like you get the game and all the DLC. You get the season yeah, like pass. A season pass. Is so there not like, a season pass on PlayStation? No, there no, is. no, no, it's oh, a season okay. pass either way. But I'm assuming the DLC once it launches, like. Xbox is going to get it a, a week before or two weeks before or something. Um, I something yeah. shit like probably that, which... a couple weeks or a month. Yeah, that's the big deal. I'll probably do, be doing the bulk of my play on the PlayStation 4 side. I have not pre-ordered it yet. Uh, I was kind of steering toward the Xbox One, at least initially, because it gets the beta on January 28th instead of the 29th. And an extra yeah. day, too. And yeah. So, yeah, so it's a, like an extra day of beta... And then I'm going to want to, like, if it does have, you know, let's say, like, a Call of Duty cycle where you get DLC a month early, you know, as a YouTuber, obviously, I'm going to want to yeah. 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 get that. Yeah. That's why I said to go for Xbox One. <laughs> but then i got to, like, cultivate a whole new friends list over there. <laughs> I know. For, for it's it's list from get to the point One where... still from, like, Call of Duty Ghosts. A lot of people don't care about the earlier content. They're more so there for the person themselves. Yes, it's cool that you get early content, but a lot of people come for the person on the channel, man. Yeah, that's like, true. Yeah, they, they, yeah. they dig the way you do your stuff. And you're you going to go where your friends are, too. Like, that's the end of the day. You just go where your friends are, pretty yeah, much. A majority, a majority of all my friends are on the PlayStation. I got you know, I got a few on the Xbox One, but just like 9 to 5 said, for the exclusives only, I buy exclusives for my Xbox One. Most multiplex, I buy them on PS4. Plus, any game I buy on PS4, I get another one for free for my wife. So okay. This is totally going to gonna turn into a Call of Duty situation or a Destiny situation where I end up buying both. I know it is. I feel yeah, like I'm going to be too to that. Now. Like, uh, they're going to double dip <laughs> on the game and on the DLC. <laughs> yeah, I might as well resign to that fact now. Yeah. <laughs> First world problems, my buddy, my, buddy, my buddy at work built a PC for this game. I'm worried about the PC version of the game. I would be, I would be because the P, the PC um, environment is completely different. Mm-hmm. Like they, especially they Ubisoft sports have not been yeah. the best. Yeah. And it's yep. a late, it was a late addition to the lineup for this game. Yep. Like they did not start development with the PC in mind. They added it in later yep. after yep. The PC players demanded it. We'll see you on the beta after runs they showed it. After they showed us all PC footage and everyone's like, "Oh my god, that game looks amazing!" and then they're like, "We should probably make a PC version." <laughs> <laughs> Let's start doing that. You know, <laughs> maybe some money needs to be had here. <laughs> should we do some news? Sure. Yeah. Sounds all right, good. Robbie, start it up. All right. So of course we all know 2016 virtual reality is pretty much upon us, and now we have the news. Since the Oculus Rift just went up for pre-order, we have the news that the HTC Vive will be available for pre-order starting February 29th. And from what I'm hearing, this thing is going to cost a boatload of money, anywhere from 
one thousand to fifteen hundred dollars, like more than the Rift. So this thing I don't uses know. different technology though. That uses like a room, right? Is you yeah. set up sensors around your room. That's what's so expensive. Movement around your room. Yeah. So this like is like the highest high end, end VR headset, pretty much. This is going to be the one for people with a lot of money. Yeah, this is like you need to set up a room in your house that's devoted to VR. Yeah, basically. I mean, it's gonna, it's gonna definitely got a high buy-in cost. We don't know what the price is yet, but from what I'm hearing, this thing is not gonna be cheap. And people were complaining about Oculus Rift. This is gonna be more expensive. Yeah, but it sounds so cool, though, doesn't it? Oh, I'm sure it's incredible. Like you pay, you get what you pay for. You pay for quality, so I'm sure it's gonna be an amazing experience. Oh, I think I could put an addition over the garage. Get my VR room set up and be like a goddamn holodeck on the Enterprise. Oh, like, my God. Like I'm more man all over again. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Yeah, I don't know, man. This thing sounds cool, but... A lot of money. It is a lot of money. It is a lot of money. Yeah. This one's also backed by Valve, right? Yep, Valve and HTC. This is their headset. So when they release it, what if uh, Half-Life 3 comes packed in? Oh, my God. <laughs> oh, man. Last title. Oh, Holy shit. People buy the shit out of it no matter what. They don't even announce it the day it comes out. Half-Life yeah. 3 is just on the store. Nobody knows that... until people start getting it, and they open it, and it's got a copy of Half-Life 3. <laughs> oh, my just explode. Oh, oh, my God. They would be pre-ordered till next December. <laughs> yeah, it would be sold out so quick. They wouldn't be able to keep up. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah, this this technology seems super cool. I think it's going to be the second or third generation where it starts getting mainstream acceptance. It's too expensive right now. Yeah. The whole like I need to set up a room for this is daunting. Yeah. You know, like nine to five. You got any room in your house that you could do this? Maybe if you move the crib. I I do, <laughs> but at the same time, I don't want to. You know, I'm like I'm not I'm not that. I don't want to play my games like that. I want to play with a controller. Like, yes, it's going to be cool to throw something on my face and be like, oh, yeah, that's awesome. Yeah. But I'm not going to sit there for six hours with this fucking thing on my head. I'm not doing that. Yeah, i got to admit, you you got a point, definitely. Um, like, I mean, I've used VR. I own a VR headset, and the technology, like, the promise for VR is incredible, but it's still, there's a lot of things that need to happen in order for it to become mainstream, to get that price down, to get people more invested in it, and people really need to try it to understand it. Man, I the people who have tried it, though, say it's awesome. Yes, it is awesome. There is no killer app. I th like, I, yes, it. yes. It that's like the that problem. Game. That's the problem, man. Like, okay, yes, if you could play Destiny and not make me want to vomit in a bucket while playing <laughs> it, that would be awesome. But you're never going to be able to do that. It's not yeah. gonna. It, it's not feasible. There's so many people going to get motion sickness. If you play something fast-paced, it's it's unreal. Well, yeah. if history is any indication, in my, my mind... This is something that's definitely going to happen. I think technology will definitely get to the point where we're not throwing up in buckets and people are able it's, to play this game for it, prolonged periods of time. I honestly believe that VR is the the future of gaming as we know it. I think that I it's, think it is too. I think it's the precipice that we've all dreamed about. I remember being a kid going into the arcade and playing Punch Out, and I would see the little wire frame of Little Mac, and in my mind that was VR, yeah. and mm -hmm. I wanted to be in that and actually I also playing remember that virtual game. Boy. I, oh, I had a Virtual Boy. <laughs> That was definitely not VR. And that shit would make you throw up, too, because of how ugly it was, and it was pure red, and it was garbage. Hey, but a red and black screen was... Oh, God, that's horrible. Just that just made you throw up because of buyer's remorse. Yeah, <laughs> yeah like, I spent that on this. <laughs> but uh, from, what I, from what I've heard from the people who played with uh, these new headsets, they've been able to play for, not prolonged, we're not talking hours, but 20 and 30 minutes without getting sick. Yeah. Uh, well, they, there was a lot of motion know. sickness when 3D games came out, right? Yeah. When Doom was a th like a brand new thing. When Castle Wolfenstein was a brand new thing. When these like when we first put people in first person perspectives in games, people got sick, right? Yeah. And we got over it, you know. Like we just kind of like we learned, our brain kind of had to learn like a new kind of interface. And I think that'll probably happen with virtual reality as well. Yeah. It might be too early, though. I think I think for the, these headsets that are being released, like not necessarily the Oculus because PCs are way more powerful than PlayStation, but the mm -hmm. VR headset for PlayStation, it's too early to make that explode. It's too early. Yeah. They're 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 planning ahead. They're planning for the next system or whatever, you know. Absolutely. But it, I, I do agree. It will blow up. It ain't blowing up yeah. right now, though. It won't. Yeah. All these companies are basically preparing for the future. They're future-proofing their own um, 
technology. See, the the PlayStation know. VR headset to me is the most exciting of the three because I think you know it'll I mean? be more of a consumer grade device where the cost won't be as high. You know, the cost of getting into a uh, Oculus Rift is sky high. You need a a GTI 970 to run it, you know, a, a pretty high-end graphics card. Really good graphics card. You need a, a beastly PC, uh, that, and you need three USB 3.0 ports. And one 2.0. Yeah, and one 2.0. Like, you need a oh. hell of a PC to run this thing. With the Morpheus, you're just going to plug this into your PlayStation 4 and get and that's it. experience. Good. It, may not be, it may not be as good as the Oculus, but if it's, it's good it's enough... Entry, it's entry level. Yeah. It's, it's entry just, level, yeah. It could be good. Cool. It was a story I was reading about. I don't think we have it in our notes, but uh, the CEO of GameStop, or is it GameSpot? Uh, the actual video game retailer was talking about the fact that he's he's had the information about PlayStation VR and Oculus Rift, and the PlayStation VR has a much grander games lineup to start off with. Oh, and I'm he, sure. He, yeah, he was saying so. that they have a ton of games that are going to be coming out and launching with this thing. And in this article, he went through all the peripherals and add-ons that PlayStation is going to have available day one in that store. So, it How many of those like, are going to be like VR bowling and VR... Yeah, you know, that's like my problem. It's like, and... it's, like, it's like, here, go go to the circus in virtual reality. No, I yeah. can do that in real life if I wanted to do that. Ride a roller coaster and it's VR. It's got to be a theme park. Now, yeah. I don't have any issue with them doing what Nintendo did and having like a little pad with tennis and bowling and all that. But they try to break them up and have their own individual games to start off. I think that's kind of milking you a little bit. We no, there should definitely VR be like a pack-in, just... like a, Nintendo, a, a Wii Sports type pack-in. For sure. A lot, of people, yeah. a lot of people are saying they're going to update like the Playroom app, and there's going to be stuff in that Playroom app for VR. Like, that's what's going to... That'd gonna, be cool. Like, yeah, when you buy it, like you're cool. already going to have it on your system, in a sense. When's the last time you are saying that? that. <laughs> a while. A while. <laughs> my my was... girls like those damn robots. They like to see... They still play with it? Yeah. <laughs> They, they really enjoy those damn robots and shaking the controller around. I would like to see that. That's something that I would. I, I think they definitely need to do is have a, a nice game pack in with this uh, with this hardware. It's going to cost some money. Uh, they're gonna they're be, gonna they're gonna pack in No Man's Sky or it's gonna come out the same day, one or the other. Be, oh, it'll be No Man's yeah. Sky will be VR. Yeah. Oh hell yeah! yeah. Everybody Everybody is saying I think that's that. the only reason why it's getting put. Like look at all the that's games like the they show us. I think that's the only reason why it's delayed is because VR is either not ready for it or they want to release it during the same type of lineup. But one thing I will say, Inner Black Ninja, is the VR that we were shown like uh, during the PlayStation experience, the VR uh, sections of that show that they showed us, the graphics weren't that great. You know, These games look kind of dated. They look like something we have seen 15 years ago because it's VR. And all the gameplay that we've seen so far in No Man's Sky looks significantly better than what we've seen in VR. So if that's the case... I would be surprised. I know everybody's saying that they think No Man's Sky is VR, and I would love for that to happen. But when you look at the way that game looks compared to everything else Sony has shown for VR, it just looks a cut above everything else we've seen. So either that game is going to be dialed back significantly to be VR, or they've found new technology that they haven't. The other developers have they not. They unlocked the eighth core. Then, yeah, that's it. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I feel like a lot of these two, the, the demos that they've shown up, these are tech demos. These aren't actual real full games, so they're not going to look as good. They're just a demonstration for the technology. I think that's part of the reason why it hasn't looked um, that good graphically. But I'm sure... Well, you also got to gotta basically run, like, two displays at the same time. Yeah, yeah. two screens right by side a, by side. It has a box that's coming with it that's doing yeah, the processing, like right? It's like it's supposed to be as big as the like the Wii U or whatever. That's what they're yeah. saying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah that's that's the processing box that's going to be doing all the computing. Which I don't. It's fucking. It's way over my head, but whatever, you know. <laughs> it's probably it's probably the size of the Xbox One's power brick. Yeah. <laughs> so, oh. yeah, it's a fucking huge block. I hope it is compatible with games that weren't built for it. Like, I'd like to check out Destiny in VR. That'd be cool. That'd be cool. That'd, That'd be, be cool. sick. I, I, yeah. I wish they'd come out and be like, oh, yeah, all these games are going to work for it. And, like, you better hope that they'd announce Destiny because you got a signing with Sony. You know what I'm saying? You would you would love to support your head unit with that game. You know how many yeah. people are going to buy that shit? I'm buying one because I'm dumb, but the other people would buy it. <laughs> for research. I'm doing it for YouTube research. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I buy it for job. <laughs> I want a driving game. I think that's like the best app for it. A Gran Turismo with that thing, yeah, or or with Oculus Rift, you can actually. They said 
They already said Gran Turismo Sport is VR. That's awesome, man. Because yep. like you think about it, what's the biggest disconnect when you're driving in a racing game yeah, is that you're looking through this like narrow screen. Mm-hmm. But if you can just turn your head and look where you want to go, man, that that changes the world for driving the, games. The can I flip, can I flip the guy off? Yes. Yeah. I flip them the bird. <laughs> that's what I would do. You gotta have PlayStation Move to do that. <laughs> <laughs> Not just hold up, hold up a wand. Big middle finger stick up with a light on it. Um, for me, when it comes to virtual reality, I want the experiences that I'm too afraid in real life to have. Now, Oculus Rift has a game that's that's been shown and people have played. It's called The Climb. It's a rock climbing simulator, and the people who played it have actually said that it's so close to the real thing. There are people who actually rock climb in real life that you're looking down and you really feel this sense that you're going to fall and maybe fall to your death. Yeah, if you're a submersible. Like that. If you're secure I want, there. I want, I want stuff that black people are traditionally too afraid to do. Bungee jumping, skydiving, skiing, <laughs> swimming in open water. I want stuff like that. <laughs> Walking in the suburbs at night. I was out there. <laughs> 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 oh, really? I was too far. Oh my god, that's that is so racist. <laughs> that is great. I'm not the one who keeps arresting him. <laughs> <Go on the pump. laughs> I'm just pointing it out. I'm just pointing it out. It keeps happening. Oh man. These oh, motherfuckers are getting shot everywhere. Don't be asking, bro. You see the police Jeez. coming and you get scared and just take see, the that shit. Doesn't happen in Canada. We're safe here. He said, "Motherfuckers are getting shot everywhere." <laughs> oh, man. On the TV, some dude's getting shot. Yeah, you're not lying, man. Damn. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, maybe we should move on to our next story before Let's I uh... <laughs> Oh my goodness. Oh man, that was a good we one. Alright, so right. Sony has tried to trademark Let's Play. Uh luckily for us it's been denied by the US Patent and <laughs> Trademark Office. I don't know why they what is the point of this? I don't understand this. Like, didn't guys... they Google search Let's Play and see, like, a billion videos on the internet? <laughs> like, they not know that shit. Let's Play is a pretty big thing that right. they can't really get a hold of? I don't understand this right. at all. So there's, a, there's prior art, right? It's like you can't, you can't have a, a valid trademark if there's already prior art. And Let's Play is, like, one of the most popular terms on YouTube. Like, I don't see how they can Let's Play is constantly. I don't, I don't see how... You, I would just delete Let's Play and put Walk Through. <laughs> there you go. You got it. Bam. Give that to Sony. There you go. The, the thing that amazes me with these companies is how these thoughts get past the, the moment of inception and actually make it to a, a, a briefing or a, a meeting, and they actually really discuss that and have a real You know what it is? Is about it. lawyers lawyer up on everything, right? It's like you want... You know, every idea you have, you send it to the legal team, and the legal team is going to try and trademark it, patent it. Uh, and it's not because you're necessarily trying to hurt other people. It's you're just trying to protect yourself a lot of the time. So if you come up with an ag- original thought, like, you know, like, let's say I wanted to trademark Briar Rabbit. If I trademarked that, that meant that nobody could have a competing business with my name in it, right? And so yeah. that's protecting me, and that's... What, when you're a big corporation, every idea you have gets sent to the lawyers, and the lawyers are going to trademark everything. So, you know, it might have not been anything that they were. <laughs> they probably didn't actually get that far, but you know, one of those situations, I guess. Yeah, it's it's just crazy that like nobody Googled Let's Play to see if there's prior art. How are they even going to trademark all those videos? They like they'd own so much. There was no way that was going to work. But all right, I, I don't think that was their goal here. I hope I don't not, anyway. It's crazy. <laughs> In much more exciting news, support has ended this week for users still running Windows 8. Right. <laughs> Am I the only one here still running Windows 8? <laughs> yes. It sucks. It fucking sucks. <laughs> oh, man. My, my computer keeps reminding me to upgrade to Windows 10, but the only thing I ever use it for is to stream with... Uh, right. with Why would you keep Windows 8? Because Don't I only use it for one thing. I use it. I use Windows 8 for one thing. It's and that's Windows 8. Don't like, use that once shit. You, once you've set up your streaming system, you don't want to fucking change anything. You've got to redo all of it. Oh, my God. It's such a pain in the neck, Robbie. It's like, seriously, one driver, 6. and all of a sudden, the whole kit and caboodle is fucking crashing on it's you. And you you're trying to get going. Prior. What's that? It's Windows 8. 
Dude, who are you trying to? Well, you're, you're trying to tell me Windows 10 is going to be some stable fucking operating system? It's still Windows, my friend. It it's may better. have a new front on it, but that shit's still going to suck. <laughs> I have Windows 10. I haven't had an issue with it. It's ten times better. I'm serious. Do it. Windows. I wouldn't say uh, ten times better, but it works. It's a lot better. It, <laughs> stubborn old man Briar doesn't get it. All right, let's move on. No, I told you my reasoning is like I already have. I have a system that is in place and working. I don't use it for any other purpose than the stream. I, my experience with streaming is that if you change if you change anything, you run the risk of messing the whole thing up. So I'm going to be I just don't want to change anything. anything. The only reason I included this story was to uh, hear your hate yeah, thoughts. Yeah, I want to hear Briar rage. <laughs> That's all I could clip it for. Anti Windows 8. And the funny thing is, last year you did so much talking about Windows 8, and now you're the only one with it. Isn't that irony? <laughs> Isn't that weird? <laughs> <what I'm saying? laughs> they suck me in. I'm like. I'm like Don Corleone. They suck me in and I can't get out. <laughs> I'm used You're to it. You're more used to it. VR, you just can't get out. It's not even like, I, all I do is I just literally start up OBS and then don't think about Windows at all, right? So I'm just looking at OBS. It sucks so bad. Maybe you're hating it for no reason. Well, part of the problem is OBS sucks nuts, too. Yes. So it's like I usually got this perfect combination of fucking a terrible operating Stop system and OBS, terrible software. OBS. I mean, think about OBS, oh bullshit for your uh, for your operating system, and OBS for the for the I'm software. I'm sure that's also. what they thought when they created it. Yeah, OBS, OBS again. All right, continuing on, guys. Homefront: The Revolution is officially coming out on May 17th. Uh, closed beta starts on February for the Xbox One. You guys excited about this? Is this gonna be a, Is this gonna be a multiplayer beta? Of course, oh, I All think right. so. God, it is. It I is much important. Homefront had a lot of cool ideas. I actually These are completely different developers, I, but still. I think that game could go either way. It could either be really, really good, or it's going to be like a five. Like, no yeah. bullshit. It's going to be either amazing like the original or Homefront. garbage. I think... No, I feel like the original Homefront was okay. It was good. There was, was a good. lot of potential they missed. I think this game... There was a lot of potential, good. but it wasn't good. I think this game is going to be much the better. Only the only... Homefront you know, came out when it came out. It was broken. Homefront two yeah. is so broken you couldn't even play that online, man. I played it for two weeks. It was so bad. I was like, well, I'm never playing that game again. Yeah. The, the thing I liked about Homefront was the story and the way they presented it. The thing I didn't like was the way the game looked. That was to me the, the major issue with Homefront is that it looked like even back then a last gen game. So I'm excited yeah. to see what they do with the story. I know the graphics are going to be nice. Hopefully they uh, they treat it right. You know, like Dairy Queen. <laughs> I'm definitely looking oh, forward right. to a new multiplayer experience, so I'll, I'll see it. I'll, I'll play the beta. Fuck it. Fuck it. Fuck, <laughs> it, fuck it, dude. Fuck it. <laughs> it's live. Grand Theft Auto lead developer has left Rockstar after 15 years. Lead developer or lo- lead story developer? No, lead developer. I think his name's Leslie Benzies or something like that. I don't remember his name, but um, clearly after he's worked there for that long, he's going to want to leave. But he's worked on Grand Theft Auto 3, 4, 5, Vice City. He's worked on Manhunt 2. He worked on L.O. Noir, Red Dead Redemption. Like, this dude has one hell of a resume for the games industry. He's worked on so many awesome games. Ooh, I, mean, I, wonder, I wonder if that will have a lasting effect on their games in the future. How important was Are you sure it was a, a man named Leslie? Yes. Oh, I'm not trying joking. To say, are, you trying to, are you trying to call this man's sexuality in a question right here? No. <laughs> what? <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah, so uh, it's one of those situations, right? Well, like Amy Hennig, she left Naughty Dog. Luckily for Naughty Dog, they had Bruce Straley and Neil Druckmann. Yeah, they were good. They're trying to pick up the reins, but if they weren't there, who knows what Uncharted 4 would be right now. They may have had to hire a new talent, and it could have just went completely in a different direction. So <laughs> they, all, they all left because Drake's dying. Their job was done. They it's rolled out. They said, oh, well, that's not, <laughs> not only are they changing the story, they're ending the story. So Yeah. Yeah. She's like, fuck it, I'm done. No. I think that I think that he's actually telling the truth though, Robbie. I'm hearing a lot uh, in the ether about the reason that a lot of these people left Naughty Dog is because they really wanted to kill off Drake and they didn't want that to happen. Yeah. That could be true. I mean, it could be easily, yeah, like disagreements with between I mean, uh, well, well Bruce Fraley had an interview. Bruce Straley had an interview a, a week ago, and uh, he uh, actually mentioned that he doesn't see, after th- this game, he doesn't see how Nathan Drake's story is going to continue. So that was kind of an elu- elite, uh, a story leak that he put out there, and I think that it's possible that Drake might actually succumb to uh, death in this game. I'm all for it. Look what they did. Look what they did when they did Last of Us. You know, They veered away from Uncharted and made something amazing. Do it more, man. 
Yeah, I'm, <laughs> I like that they're taking a different direction. They're not afraid to go with sort of a darker tone for Uncharted 4. I mean, the game's going to be awesome. I'm sure I'm looking Brian? forward to it. I love they, Uncharted they, games, man. I, I do, too. I'd be sorry to see them go. I love those games. I love, I love them too. I love them too, man. And, but but you, you don't want to get burnt out on them either. You know they got no, it ended. As long as they end it good and it's sent off well, all right, cool. I'm I'm all for it. Yeah, I'm okay with one every like five six years. How about that? Can we do that? Yeah. Like we don't have to have a every then three years pushing, four years. They're pushing the line of being like a Japanese company when they do that. You know what I'm saying? Like Japanese company need like nine years to make a game. Like dude, by the time this shit comes out, everyone's moved on. Yeah. I, I just Best like story. that. I just like that adventure, like kind of Han Solo, Indiana Jones ish character that he has. It's fun. Yeah. You know, they just make for fun games. You don't see them too often like that. A yeah. lot of people have tried to capture that feeling, but very few people have succeeded like the Uncharted games have. Yeah. Uncharted is an amazing franchise. I'm sure they can uh, do no wrong. Oh, they've done wrong. That mobile game was terrible. <laughs> <laughs> what was that? that one from the PS Vita was awful. Oh, <laughs> what was it called? Like Gold something. Abyss. Gold oh Abyss was awesome. Oh, I'm trying to Gold go with this. It was amazing, bro. No, it was terrible. No, it wasn't. That game, no. that game controlled like horrid. horrid. It was oh, awful. No, it controlled it. good. It was what are you talking? It's, Crazy it's old man, possibly... get off the podcast. You're done, Briar. Hold on, Briar. <laughs> I gotta stand up. See, I'm I'm not as big as an Uncharted fan as my wife. But that was the first game we got on the Vita, and yeah, that is a console. It's a game. console quality game that plays almost identical to the PlayStation. That was Vita. Sony Ben. They didn't. You, gotta, job you gotta stop that, trying man. to control Briar, third stop. person, any kind of shooter, any kind of shooter with those thumbsticks is a terrible experience. You're a terrible experience. Now, hey, look, but but Briar, not only was the thumbsticks the issue, you can also move the PlayStation Vita and aim that way. So it actually gave you more of, of an ability to aim than the PS3 version. You gotta try it when you pull out your gun. I tried it and I hated your, it. Your feet are where you're gonna aim. And you'll move We're not gonna convince him. Just move down. on, move on. Give up. It's over. All right. All right. What else we got? Respawn <laughs> Entertainment working on a third-person action adventure game alongside development of Titanfall. Titanfall two. Yeah, they have the second team. They've been working on something that. I mean, I love that. That sounds awesome. They're gonna not just make a Titanfall three. They're gonna do something different. And that what sounds super cool. Same universe. Like if they'll. Kind of make all their games kind of in this universe with Titanfall. That would be sick. That would be yeah, awesome. it's a cool universe. Titanfall was a cool game. I wish it lasted longer. Yeah, Black I mean, Contact, Titanfall man, 2. didn't have enough. There's yeah. not enough there. It was a great game, though. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think if they do the same with Titanfall 2, exactly, just give you a reason to play, give you a reason to keep playing. Titanfall 2 is going to knock out of the park. It definitely could. It seems like, especially in a new generation, when you do sort of a sequel to the first one, it all, almost always seems to be a big thing. Like Assassin's Creed 1 and 2 was a huge jump. There's lots of other examples too. Like it really could be an amazing game. Whatever this they new idea. Figure out all the hard shit, and then they could just make it fun in the second one. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that might work. They try a new thing, and then they see what worked and what didn't work, and uh, that's why. It's, come well, on, it's always still good. A lot of stuff worked, but there wasn't a, enough stuff that worked. There wasn't. Yeah, story, there wasn't really an easy, a reason for you to come back and and flesh out more and play multiplayer and really feel rewarded. Everything was well executed. You just needed a reason to play it. Just need really. to be more. Just more. That's it. So yeah. hopefully we get an eight, ten hour single player campaign. It'd be nice if they implement an ability for you to play the campaign with other people the way they did with Call of Duty. That would be yeah. awesome. Yeah. Uh, and and just flesh out the multiplayer. Add more weapons. You know, more maps, and it'll be good to go. All right. So okay. continuing on. And this Call of Duty Black Ops 3 actually was the number one selling game in 2015. But Call of Duty, the Call of Duty franchise has passed 250 million sold. Jesus. That's a big number. That's a lot. It's not surprising, but that's like stupid. That's ridiculous. Cool. That's, a, that's a reason to be proud, a reason to be happy. You know, nothing, nothing like success. That series just prints money every year. It's just insane. I'm sure like Ghost 2 or whatever this Activision's game is. Activision's got a bunch of those now. <laughs> yeah, oh, they no. do. yeah, they do. Yeah, they do. They're just going to keep Warcraft, coming. Diablo Three, Hearthstone. They have so many Destiny. Destiny. Yeah, Destiny. Destiny. <laughs> Destiny. That's a big deal. That's Unbelievable. They're, they're I mean, I'm sure Call of Duty Ghosts Two, whatever this year's Call of Duty is by Infinity War, I'm sure that's going to come out and print money too. Like this franchise is just not going to stop gonna be, anytime soon. It's going to be hard to beat the full-on package of Black Ops Three. That package alone so it, much. It gives you more than anything, dude, that I've seen in a long time. Like, damn. Yeah, Traitor Chris is a good package. I like it. 
Co-op, single player, zombie mode, multiplayer. <laughs> Prayer <laughs> got that. <laughs> Everyone else is like, uh, just totally flew over their heads. <clears throat> you got a good package going. I like how it feels. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, let's just keep going. <laughs> Alright guys, what do we got next? Oh, I'm 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 the black guy here. US President Barack Obama is investing four billion dollars in self driving cars. Yeah, he should just take some. How much does he and... pay to be president now? Holy shit. There's a lot of damn money for this. <laughs> My fellow Americans. Uh yeah, I think they should just not do that and invest in the homeless of America and take care of some of the American infrastructure instead of Self-driving cars. Yeah. yeah. Speaking of uh, self-driving cars, though, because the last... I completely disagree. I, I want self-driving cars, man. <laughs> I want self-driving cars, too. I don't they like driving. It scares they the crap stop. out of me. I just love the homeless just... person, Brian. They'll ride right over the homeless person. <laughs> yeah. Holy Brian, I'll give I a mean, damn. That's what was that? Sad, I guess. <laughs> From what I'm hearing, too, like, a lot of people have said that most of the driving errors, like, accidents that happen, almost all of it is because of human error. And if you take that away and let a machine or a computer control that, it's going to be a lot safer, actually. That's why the president is now investing in this, because it's going to be the way of the future, probably, like VR. I can definitely see it, self-driving cars. I mean, I don't have to drive now, and it makes me... I hate driving. We, so. we actually oh, have a car. Know. We actually have a car at work that... If you get out of the car, it will park itself into your garage and stop. But they don't allow it to be um, used in America. America doesn't allow it. It's like against their law. Yeah. So before they ship to America, they have to take that technology out of the car. Damn, yeah, so. I mean, Google already has those self-driving cars out on the road that they're they've been testing for a year or two now. I mean, yeah, te Tesla is going to be the Tesla is going to be the first one to actually come out with one. Tesla is supposed to release one. Um, the end of this year, supposedly. Yeah, they already have an early version on the market. It's only, you know, somewhat autopiloted, but this technology is impressive, and if you can really make driving safer this way, and especially for people who don't really want to drive like me, that would be great. So, all right. <laughs> Tesla also has, like, a 13-inch monitor yep. for, like, their center console. Yeah, it looks like a looks Maybe like a it's tablet. got an HDMI input. <laughs> but <laughs> just... <laughs> Oh, oh, man. Just you games. Wouldn't that be messed up? You playing Gran Turismo while you're driving down the street? <laughs> oh, yeah. What do you focus on, the game or the real driving? No, the self-driving car, man. You're getting driven no. around by your self-driving oh, car. for some reason I was thinking you're playing game games. while you're driving. I'm like, that's crazy. Well, that see, awesome. It's a good and a bad in my eyes, right? Because in theory, this would eliminate all traffic tickets. You'll never have a speeding ticket. you never run anybody over, but there are going to be those people who decide to jump in front of your your car. They might not know that it's an automatic car. They'll jump in front of you. Boom! They're not going to blame you because you weren't driving, but they're going to take a lot of money from the person who developed that, that car. And that I, how is that any different than if I was driving it, though? Well, you don't think they have you're, to not, work you're not getting sued. Yeah, that's better. That's, that's right. That's better. <laughs> the thing that they have to worry well, about a lot is a lot, of these cars, a lot of these cars are electric, so on top of it driving itself, it also doesn't make any noise. There's no yeah. road noise, no motor noise, no nothing. It's, That's it's a good point. quiet. Like, if I was a gang member and I was trying to do a drive-by, I would mm. buy an electric car. <laughs> That's what they heard, you know? No. If I was <laughs> driving it's crazy. probably like, an electric car. They wouldn't know I was doing. next to somebody and they're walking, like, to go across the street, and they don't even hear your car. You, you could damn near hit them. Because a lot of people use sound to, to see if there's something. They don't look. You'd be surprised yeah. at the amount of people that don't look. Oh, if you're a black man, these people with the iPhone headphones in, they're like staring oh, down while they're walking yeah. down the street. <laughs> you step right man. off that curb, get hit by a by a Tesla. Motherfuckers <laughs> playing Grand Turismo in there. <laughs> Especially if you're a black man driving through the suburbs. Why do you want that electric car? They don't man, this car should be back in the tent. Really, like I hit that wall. <laughs> God damn. <laughs> oh, <man. laughs> oh, yeah, that's great. Welcome yeah, this back. Is good, though. I mean, it, it, Welcome back. It does so much for us, right? Is we get better gas mileage because all these cars are going to be able to drive closer together. Uh, we're going to have less traffic. We're going to have you know less times with you just spend. You spend less time wasted by driving a car. You can be productive instead of having to just sit there and steer, right? You can be reading the paper. You can be relaxing. You can get. You know, pull out your laptop, do some work while you're driving. You know, there's so many benefits to self-driving cars. It'd be awesome. Yeah. Wonderful. 
I think the potential is definitely there. I'm yeah. looking forward to it. Oh, no, I'd rather have a flying car. All right, guys, let's continue on. With One thing. Self-driving flying car. Oh, Briar Rap. The next level you shit right here. next Steve Jobs. Huh? Yeah. Fifth element. You are the next Bill Gates. <laughs> Okay. The Division multiplayer beta will open January 28th on Xbox One, January 29th on PS4 and PC, and will run until the 31st. Can't wait. So, four days on Xbox One, three days on PS4 and PC. We are getting in on that, guys. That is going to be awesome. Yeah, well, I need, absolutely. I need, well, I need to take some days off just to make we sure. we got to communicate. And get in, uh, I took three more days more. off. I yeah, did, too. I, Inner Black Ninja, you take days off for things like this, don't you? Yeah, I took three days off for Division and three days off for Dark Souls. Ooh, nice. Uh, welcome back, sir. It's been a long time. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Did and you also, did you see the the article about how it runs on Xbox compared to PC? Which that's kind of a no brainer. They were saying that it's it's a lot framier on Xbox than it is on PC. Nobody's played the PS4 version yet, so there is no really? PS4 footage or anything about the PS4 version. I'm worried about I'm worried about the PS4 version. Well, the Xbox One version doesn't. It's I've seen a lot of screen tearing in videos I've seen. It doesn't. It doesn't look bad. It's, it doesn't look bad. It's not anything Maybe. to bitch about. Like really, I've played worse. You know, like it's mm-hmm. not. And yeah. the amount of stuff that that game is doing, you're running with. Like I played almost the entire thing with four of my friends. The entire thing, and it ran. It ran like we didn't notice real bad frame drops or anything like that. Nothing to be like shit. This is broken. Same here. Fallout, when I was playing the Fallout, Alpha, I mean. Fallout. Fallout. Mm. <laughs> That's very true. Yes. But if, if the PS4 version is a port, it could be the worst version, right? Like That's this, true. I believe the the lead development platform on this game is the Xbox One. So if yes, if you haven't seen any any yeah. video of it on the PS4, it could be a bad port. We don't know. Yeah. Wait and see. PC Ubisoft porting the game Sketchy. over to PC. Don't know. We'll see. Yeah. All right, guys, and the final piece of news we have is that the Division Xbox One bundle has been announced for people who don't have an Xbox One, obviously. Yeah. One terabyte hard drive, you get the game, and you get pretty much normal other stuff, $400. So. Does it come with, like, yeah. a knit cap for your Xbox? Or a gas mask? Yeah, that'd be cool. <laughs> no, it doesn't. <laughs> Damn it, you'll be so... There's no, there's no customization on the... There's no graphics or anything on the Xbox? I don't know. Well, it's just the matte black. I think it's just probably the regular one. Yeah, yep. the black one. I like it when they do like at least a custom color, and I really like it, you know, when they have like graphics on it, like the Taken yeah. King version of the of uh, yeah, that, PS4. That's a sick yeah. system. That's the yeah. coolest. Uh, I've been looking at system. that, man. I've been looking at that. That's really <laughs> nice. No, wait, hold on. I'll unhook it. <laughs> the uh, you guys remember hold the old on, Halo, my pants. Uh, original Xbox that oh. was like see through green. That clear plastic. That oh, was cool. Yeah. Gears of War. Remember the Gears of War Xbox oh, yeah, 360? Yeah. yeah. yeah that yeah. was cool. Like I like it when they do that stuff. Remember the old Halo Xbox, the original Xbox? That's a, just said that like, like that too. 20 seconds ago. That was I, thought you were talking about the, I thought you said Gears of War. I'm sorry. Yeah, the, the, oh, Halo, the Halo version of the Xbox that was clear green plastic. You could see the circuit boards underneath. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm sorry, I didn't hear you. I was unzipping my pants for when he brings that PS4 over here. That is uh, slick too. It was it's super dope, and the cool thing is, is it's all like in there. It's not like it's it's like all like you could feel all the texture in it. Yeah, oh, which that's is awesome. That's beautiful, Briar. And it's all shiny too. Yeah. Yeah, that's a really Briar, nice system. Briar wants your address there, uh, Inner <laughs> <laughs> It has a two terabyte in it too. I almost pulled the trigger on that. I almost did it. And I have two PS4s already. <laughs> I almost pulled the trigger on it. <laughs> when I saw it, I was like, yeah. It was between that and the, the Darth Vader one. When the Darth Vader one got announced, was I was like... pretty good, too. Yeah. I was like, I yeah. have to get this one. No kidding. Yeah, that's pretty slick, man. I like your setup that you got there, Inner Black. I love the yeah. uh, the posters you got back there. There's I have a big who, shelf up here with all my games on it, too. Like Witcher and all that stuff. Got all my... Nice. I got like I don't know sixty some games up there. <laughs> I like that. Welcome back. The great addition. Addition is something like. Have, have you done a new setup video? No, I ha- I've really no, not in a while. I've I've gotten a lot of shit since then. I'm gonna get the. I'm getting a um a 43 inch 4K TV. 4K, today, yeah. This Ooh. week. And then I'm getting for, for that area there that you're in. Yes. Yeah. 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 I'm. 
I'm going to use my 27-inch um, as my computer monitor, and then I'm using my 4K for my gaming, and then I'm also... I want to get the new Triton headset, the Triton Katanas. Mm -hmm. What are you using now for that gaming headset, Astros? I use I use my Astro still, yeah. They're chill. I, I got the Astro earbuds. I use those for, like, just my quick, like, music and everything else, or if my mic dies. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I'd be interested in seeing a new gaming setup. I love gaming setups. Uh, Microsoft files trademark for video game software Robo Raid. So probably an exclusive. I mean, the first thing that comes to mind when I hear this is some sort of robot fighting arena or something. I don't know. I have no idea what this is though. Could be cool. But I got an idea. What if it's mechanical cockroaches and you have to chase them with raid? You got like Robo Raid. Damn right. <laughs> <laughs> I'm down. This is a great idea. I love it. <laughs> or VR <laughs> with robots. <laughs> they have a commercial for it that just has mechanical cockroaches going, Robo Raid! <laughs> oh my god. Yeah. That would not <laughs> I'm down pre order today, damn it. Yeah, good stuff. Alright, I think we're done. We got anything else we want to talk about today? Uh, no, that's pretty much all the news. I mean, alright, fine. About now. You guys want to just get rid of me, whatever. Yeah, get out of here, Briar. We can stay. We can Bandai stay. Namco is making a golf game. That's kind of weird. It's an MMO. What? That is, yeah. What? Yeah, that's that is uh, weird. That's new Hot Shots, right? Yeah. No, no, no. It's called um, uh, putting putter something, something, something with putting in it. But putter something something. 2016. But it's a it's an MMO. It's free to play, and then it's like it's like you literally walk up to the other character and like, hey, you want to golf? Like it's weird. <laughs> it's weird exactly <laughs> golf hey, you want to golf? Is that how they speak in Japan? The next Hot Shots mm -hmm. is going to be an open world game. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's yeah, yeah. more ambitious than Destiny. Wow, I'm impressed. <laughs> Well, you gotta go well, if you think about it, going off it is kind of like a raid. You got four people that you gotta kind of organize at the same time. <laughs> Half of them suck. You all. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. You know, you all ride together in your golf cart. You all chase the 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 uh, beer cart girl together. <laughs> yeah, that war priest. That war priest on hard was a pain in our ass. Yeah, for real. All right, guys, I think that's going to do it for the show then. Uh, Beastly, what do you got coming up this week? Uh, I got a plan, man. I'm, I'm still trying to figure out about week. I, I, honestly, I'm still in a weird place up here. But uh, it'll definitely be a lot of videos coming out this week. Like I said, I rendered 12 yesterday. So <laughs> uh, just look forward to that. I had to stay busy, man. It's one of those days. Yeah, I hear you. Um, but, yeah, I, I'm going to be playing some games, probably jumping my Xbox One a little bit this week, and uh, we'll just see what happens on the channel. All right. Nine to five, we'll get to this week. One, one more thing. Don't forget, guys, episode 100, everybody here is going to be stark naked. Welcome black back, naked. Inner Black Ninja. Yeah, you came in at the right time. We'll be working out until the, the six-pack yeah. abs. Get <laughs> sick <laughs> 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 now. <laughs> Welcome back, sir. I hope it's a little warmer. I'm going to be really embarrassed. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, from from oh. the chest up, from the chest up. <laughs> oh my goodness! No shirts, no shoes, no shoes. I didn't pay. I didn't pay for this nipple ring for nothing. I'm showing this thing off. <laughs> <laughs> oh man! Got the chain That's... going down. Oh, never mind. <laughs> 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 does, does the chain connect to anything else, Briar? Well, I mean, it is a chain. Nine to five. What do you got going on this week? Uh, I think I'm gonna do a, a video on Lego Dimensions actually, um, and then I'm probably gonna do uh, a video pretty much explaining why I dig Rainbow Six because it's a different kind of game. It's different, mm -hmm. and I'm, I'm since the NDA is up, I'll post all my Destiny footage. Fuck it. Division. You mean? <laughs> yeah, Division. Yeah. Nice. Oh, yeah, I was the NDA a, a long time ago, my friend. You are late to that. <laughs> That's a while ago. Robbie, what are you up to this week? Uh, I don't know. We'll, we'll see. Good. Check back on the channel. Maybe. Might be something. Hi. <laughs> well, damn. That's all I got. That's all I got. Hi. Hi. Yeah. Get hyped for nothing, maybe. All right. You guys already know what to expect from me. More Destiny footage. I'm really looking forward to the what? Division. There's definitely. Thief? I'll definitely be covering the Division when that comes out. Uh, I'll probably. I'll probably start covering it with the beta, but. Yeah, say division. Like, I, I'm really hyped for the division. I hope it lives up to my expectations. 
Keep uh, your expectations well, low enough, though. Go into the real quick, flat Brian. Mind. Brian, What's I have that? a question for you. So what do you do now when the division comes out? Do you jump on division or do you do both or what do you what do you what's your he does what he enjoys how about that play yeah, I, probably, I probably will at my goal right now is to keep on destiny and add the division into it okay yeah good plan cool. good plan but uh you know the future the future's unknown you know i don't know i don't know if we're going to get any new content in destiny for the whole year yeah. You know, I don't have a whole lot to talk about in Destiny right now. Just you know, what, really do what you're passionate about, Friar, What if the uh, division comes out and flops, man? That's what I'd be concerned. Yeah, I hope. It I doesn't. mean, I think with the division, we just need to keep our expectations realistic and kind of go in with an open mind. Because I've learned in the past now that you can't be too hyped for a game. You're just yeah. gonna look it's forward to that thief. Let's play. That's that's what I'm saying. <laughs> oh, <laughs> I've waited a while for that one, Briar. And oh, Advanced man. Warfare too. That's taking its time, but hopefully it'll be good. <laughs> Quality over quantity, you know. It would be I, funny if I just started. I should just start episode one. Let's play of every game I play, and just never do an episode two for any of them. Can you imagine too, because you only post Destiny. How confusing that would be to people. Like everyone would be like, "What? What is going on?" Let me let me ask you a question, bro. You did say that we know what to expect from you this week. Are you going to get back into Tomb Raider this week? You plan on beating that game? Yeah, I'll, yeah, I'm definitely planning on beating that game. I'm loving that game. Um. I don't know that I'm going to make any content on it, though. It's kind of, you know, it's I'm playing the single-player version. I'm just having fun, like, just kind of deep diving into it. And well, well, if you do beat it, can we get a video on your final thoughts of the game? Yeah, maybe I'll do something like that. I was yeah. thinking about doing a Let's Play, but I kind of decided not to because, you know, playing through that game, I just wanted to enjoy it for myself, you know? It's amazing. It's an amazing game to just sit down and veg out on. Yeah. I was actually thinking about doing, like, a video series where, like, you know, once a week or so, like, two of us or three of us or four of us get together, and uh, one guy plays the game and the other the other two or three watch, and we just talk about the game as it's getting played, you know? That would be an interesting idea. I like yeah. that. I don't know. I, I kind of stirring that around in my head. We'll think about it. All right. That's going to do it for this week's Beastly Thoughts, episode 96. Uh you know, I'm starting to apply the spray on tan for episode 100. I want to make sure I look. Uh, look I already nice. got I'm, mine. I'm putting my E Honda spray on six pack on. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> oh man. Get ready for that. So that's gonna do it for this show, guys. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next week. Bye, everybody. Thank you for watching.